Well everyone, springtime is here, the birds are coming out, the sun's shining, and what better way to start the spring season by brewing a couple potions? Today we're going to be talking about Grom's Guide to Potion Brewing. Welcome to the Homebrew Crew, I'm Tony, this is Sean, and today we're going to be going over Grom's Guide to Potion Brewing. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a fantastic little thing that we found on the DMs Guild that you guys might find interest in. It's a way of adding a little bit more flavor to your person with your herbalism kit, and uh, we want to kind of break it apart and see what you guys think of it. So. Yeah, and I think it's interesting because if you've, you run a homebrew campaign and you've had any kind of traveling or anything like that involved, more often than not, you're going to get players that are like, oh, can I look for food? Oh, can I look for stuff while we're walking around? You yeah, know? and that, that trope, that thing that happens that when they're out in the wilderness <laughs> for so many days, uh, they go, well, you know, is there going to be a shop that we can stop at? I really need healing potions. Yeah. Or I really want to do this. And this guide actually gives you a way to brew your own potions, a little mechanic that you can add to your campaign to do that. Um, it's kind of a neat thing. So, you know, you, there's this whole thing of harvesting components. So when you first start, um, while you're taking a short or long rest, you can kind of scavenge around to see if you can find particular flowers mm -hmm. and things. And it's really well structured. They actually give you this whole chart that you can use, um, basically depending on the region uh, and uh, depending on like where you're at, it'll determine what kind of plant you can find. Mm -hmm. And then it also determines like what the DC is, if it's like maybe like a hard to find plant or maybe it's something that's more common. Um, and then it gives you a list of like how many you need to actually brew a potion as well. Right, for example, uh, par uh, pargan, which is a, a plant mm -hmm. that they have in there. Uh, it's 1,500 gold is what the, the plant's actually worth. Yeah. You can only find it in the jungle and it's got a 30 DC. And then what you find on that for the harvest is a 1D1. Yeah. You literally just find one. But That's for good of, reason, because we'll get into why it's such a rare plant in a little bit. Exactly. You um, need eight of them to make this really cool potion. Yeah. Uh, but it's also important to note that uh, the herbalism kit is very vital to pretty much this entire thing. Mm -hmm. um, you know, obviously having uh, proficiency with it uh, is required. And a high survival Yeah. As well. And so those two work together to basically kind of emphasize the focus of this. Now, you could flavor it as you wish. Um, mm -hmm. If you want to make it a little bit more available to players that might not have proficiency in herbalism, you can do so. Uh, but, you know, I kind of like that it's locked to like that. specified yeah because yeah. you know a, a lot of people tend to overlook kits and they think oh this is never going to be useful yeah like the medicine kit or what yeah. have you and believe me we've got videos and things we want to do on those later but um <laughs> this is a great thing so let's let's grab uh one of these potions and one of yeah. these oils yeah, for sure. and uh you would scavenge around for it so let's say you're in you know let's let's put you in the the jungle or something okay. like that right yeah so what are some of the things that we can actually find in the jungle Sorry, I have to scroll back up. Uh, jungle, you have... Oh, of course, some of the more oh. rare ingredients, yeah. Well, all right, so forget the jungle. <laughs> well, let's let's just go somewhere like the mountains, for example. Sure, right? let's say that you're in cold mountains. And it's really, really cold out there. You would like to have a potion to endure the elements, for example. Mm -hmm. And this, if you're going around there, that is the Palma Eldath, mm -hmm. which is the one you have to look for. And that one uh, has a DC on there. I'm sorry, I keep... Doing the scroll up and down thing. Uh, the DC on there <laughs> for that one is 10. It's actually fairly easy to find, and it's a 1D4. Mm -hmm. that you have so to I would imagine it's almost like the, the frozen dandelion of like the world. It's just like kind of almost like weeds. Like, oh, there's one. You know, it's there. You right. Know. Yeah. So I mean, you, it's a DC 10. It's not hard to find with it, uh, but with good reason, because then you can make with that the Endure Elements potion, mm -hmm. which is kind of cool. So you need 14 of them in order to do it. Uh, but the herb slowly brewed in a potion keeps a person warm for eight hours and prevents them from suffering uh, from exposure. Mm -hmm. So it's the difference between life and death, they say. Yeah, and besides being a cool mechanic, I just love this flavor, particularly with this one. You know, the whole, like, you know, survival and trying to, like, stay warm. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you can kind of, like, flavor that as you will. Um, now, for example, another thing you can find in the cold mountains is the mountain garlic. Um, now this it's one has good. a, yeah. Capes away mountain vampires. Yeah, right. yeah exactly. <laughs> got a strong flavor, yeah. you know, great in soups. Really um, gets the mountain Italians to come out though, so. <laughs> 
Yeah. Um, but this is another example of something you can find in the same region. It's got a DC of 15, though, and mm -hmm. you need 16 of these to brew what you're trying to make. However, if you are able to find enough mountain garlic, you are able to create a lesser res potion. Which is neat. Mm -hmm. Oh, see? Look at that. It, it says it respe uh, dispels or repels evil spirits. Mm -hmm. Told you, the vampires don't like yeah, the, the mountain stay away. garlic. Um, but yeah, so it's oh, it's it's kind of cool how it says it too. So when roasted combined with ginger, sugar, and soda water, it <laughs> creates a, a curing potion. Uh, the potion has been known to restore any one condition, such as blinded, deaf, and paralyzed, or poisoned. So it's the same thing of casting that greater restoration, mm -hmm. but you know, or I'm sorry, lesser restoration. But it still does. It, it's neat because it's a one-shot thing. Yeah, and again, it's really cool because it, you're almost like enticing your players just to spend time looking around for a bunch of flowers. Uh, but you're, what you're really doing is that you're investing them more into the environment and kind of giving them more to do other than just like resting and then going off somewhere. See, now the one thing I would say is that you want to have it... I See, and the reason why I would limit it to the guys with an herbalism kit or mm -hmm. something like that is that you don't want to have... Oh, I look for the flowers. Oh, yeah. I look for the flowers. Oh, like no, no, no. Limit it to one person that's <laughs> going to go around and scavenge for it. Yeah. That way, it makes this potion that you make something rare. And the time that it takes to make that potion is determined by you as the DM, according to this. So you know you can kind of kind of work with that in a way. Um, but they do give you some advanced brewing options <laughs> on here as well. Yeah, they add a couple tools that you can actually add to your campaign uh, to kind of like, you know, entice players to actually get these items and they improve the quality of your brewing of the potions. Right, so things like fine uh, steel clippers that add plus one to your harvesting when you do something, uh, the gardening gloves that then, what do they end up doing? They, oh, your uh, the number that you gather is 1d6 instead of 1d4 mm -hmm. for something. Uh, limited edition plant book. This one's my favorite with that. <laughs> it's literally walking around with an encyclopedia yeah. botanica. See? <laughs> see what I did there? Um, and, you know, you go through it and see what's what's what, and it gives you advantage on the roll. And then there's the insta-boil pot, which, uh, which cuts your potion brewing time in half. So each one kind of has its own little little thing that you add to it. Yeah, exactly. Um, and again, I was kind of looking at this a little quickly. Um, it's actually a pretty quick read. Uh, it's structured very well, but at the same time, it's pretty simple to kind of get a handle mm -hmm. of. This is something that you can really splash in any campaign that literally has an outdoor setting. So you okay. can put this in anything. Hey, I yeah. even do it in city campaigns. You know, just kind of decide, just maybe it'd be little mushrooms and things that mm -hmm. you find or, you know, little weeds growing through the in the... Yeah, and, and it's actually important to note that since all the plants and everything have values, you can make this an optional thing in the shops as well. Maybe they're not good at finding it. Maybe they happen to find like night call like in a shop somewhere. See, and that's that's the thing I really like about mm -hmm. that because it talks about how your players can actually sell the herbs that they yeah. find to shops. But if you think about it, it would be a great way to to make extra money with things. Like, all right, so maybe the herbs that you find in there are worth a couple of gold in a town that has the grasslands. Like if you've got, you know, leopard's bane, for example, mm -hmm. that you just harvested. Right. But if you take that leopard's bane to the <laughs> desert, right. people are gonna, it's gonna be a hot commodity. You know? Yeah, you can even like maybe homebrew like a multiplier of how valuable it is when you take it to a completely different place where this would never grow. Right, and it, it, it just gives you so many new options and a great way to actually just flavor your campaign. I really, really like this. Grom's Guide to Potion Brewing. Um, I would say it's made by Grom, but we have to take a look <laughs> and see who actually made this one with it. Uh, Zachary Truscott. Yep, and, and Nelson Demister. So yep. these two helped uh, design this. Again, you can find this on DMs Guild. It's currently paid what you want. We highly recommend it. Mm -hmm. um, it adds a uh, not only just a new mechanic, but it can add a lot of flavor. It can add an economy. It can add story. <laughs> a lot of opportunities that you can get out of this simple like little mechanic. And while it is pay what you want, we would definitely recommend giving them you know a couple bucks, two to five dollars, or you know something that would actually help people create and keep going because this home brewing thing is a lot of fun to us so we really enjoy that now coming up very soon in the next couple of weeks we are going to be starting our live stream uh, mm -hmm. of the maw and that's going to be kind of a, a nifty little thing too if you guys have mechanics that you would like us to test out send it to us because the way we're doing this thing you guys get to decide what's actually going to be in these campaigns. Yes, and if you're a big fan of Grom's Guide to Potions or some other mechanic that you've found on D&D Beyond or DMs Guild or anywhere else that you might have seen homebrew content, <laughs> you're more than welcome to send us in, send it into us and go out on a vote, and we'll see if we can uh, put in our campaign. That's right, right down here at DM Brew... What? 
dmbrewcrew at gmail.com. <laughs> oh, I got it there, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it, it slid. I don't know. <laughs> Uh, and, or, of course, like, subscribe, find us on our Discord. Everything is on our banner up at the top and now in our description. We actually finally did that. And we make it just easier for everyone to find stuff, <laughs> so there you go. <laughs> well, remember, the best campaigns are always the ones that are home-brewed, even if they're potions. So until next time, keep, keep brewing. brewing.